What's going on, y'all? This is Rob with Cinema Bullies. Uh, today, I'm gonna make a shorter video on reading in general. Um, and what I'm getting at with breeding is, um, like I said in my old video about line breeding, um, inbreeding, scatter breeding, cross breeding. Um, you know, it's basically going off of that. But, you know, a lot of people don't really understand what that stuff means. So I'm gonna just break it down a little bit simpler. Um, so basically, I'm gonna use Gotti line for an example, and I'm gonna use Michelin's for an example. All right, both those bloodlines uh, carry heavy uh, bulldog traits. Very extreme looks. Bigger heads, wrinklier faces, bigger bone, and then they also carry certain flaws. Um, you know, if you ever look at the heavy Gotti line dogs, the heavy Mike Lins, um blood dogs, um, some of them have some easty westy feet, some of them have the real high rears. Um, from their you know front legs being shorter than their uh, rear leg or the angulation or the straight stifles of the dog and that's all from that heavy you know Gotti line heavy Mike Lins blood there's a couple other bloods that have that stem off of like the, the Gotti line and the Mike Lins, but they have different um, bloodlines but if you look back for the generations you'll see that for yourself um, that's why I'm saying you always want to dissect the pedigrees you want to go back as far as you can and look at all the dogs in the pedigree. So, now, if you go over to the other side of these dogs, which, you know, would be like the Razor's Edge blood, the Gray Line blood, the Remy Line, um, what else? I mean, I'll use those three for an example. So, they're, those dogs are more of, uh, you know, Terrier Amstaff, uh, built dog um, not as bully as the Gotti line or the Mike Lins, uh blood dogs but they are more structurally sound and clean and they bring certain attributes to the real bully extreme dogs that come from the Gotti line and Mike Lins blood so it's always good to have a clean dog in your house um, that stems off of those bloodlines Razor's Edge, Grey Line, Remy Line there's a few others but the more gamier dogs with the higher drive with minimum to no, to no health issues um, you know that's important to have in your yard at least you know one or two dogs like that so when you breed these over extreme dogs that you know stem from you know doing a lot of inbreeding and line breeding of like Gotti line and Mike Lynn's blood you know you, you tend to run into some problems you know three four generations in so the only way to clean that up is by bringing in one of those dogs off of you know Razor's Edge blood Gray line Remy line etc and that blood should fix or somewhat fix whatever issues you're running into if it's health issues, if it's structural problems, if it's, you know, breathing issues, all that stuff can get fixed, but you just need to know how to do it. So a lot of these breeders that I'm watching and seeing on these platforms, they just tend just to just keep breeding the bulliest and bulliest and bulliest, which, I mean, that's cool. But then you wonder why your dogs are dying before they're two years old. You know, a uh, five-year-old dog is, you know, considered a long life when you get, you know, overdone with the bulliness and the extremeness of these dogs. So, to me, is it worth it doing it like that? No, I, I don't think it's worth it. Because um, all you're doing is, you know, messing up the blood for the future, you know, breeders or, you know, people that want to get into this, like, you know, as a hobby. Because all you're doing is flooding that blood with um, non-desired traits and health issues so you know you want to 
you want to breed to what your image of the of the dog is supposed to be in your vision but you want to try to do it the correct way and not do it the shortcut way so like i said sometimes when you get too too bully too extreme all those problems start then you gotta clean it up and then you gotta use a, a more correct dog or like that comes off of like the razor's edge remy line or gray line clean it up and then start over again and then breed that dog you know the way that you were going towards because then hopefully from breeding it with the you know healthier dog that's more structurally sound it should clean it up enough for you to continue doing what your vision of what you're trying to do is so you know always look back in the pedigrees see what you're working with see what exotic bloods in there see what kind of game dog bloods in there look at you know how far and how many times inbred and line bred the Gotti line or the Mikeland's blood is because like I said the dogs that had carried more of those bulldog traits the more bullier dogs you know it just stems to have problems so take this advice I mean I said I'm not telling you how to breed I'm not telling you what to do but take this advice um, and hopefully you know you'll take your time and do it correctly and then get the product that you want in the in the vision of dog that you want in the end without taking the shortcuts trying to do it and then having dogs dying before they're two so i hope this helps you guys out um if you guys want me to clarify more on certain things i'll bet you i'm going to make a video of me breaking down a pedigree on how i do it i'm going to show you actual pedigrees and show you what i look at so stay tuned for that and uh if you have any you know comments concerns or uh knowledge that you know maybe i didn't say right or you know you have a different input on uh drop it below i'd like to hear and uh i said i'll comment back to you as soon as i can all right thanks guys later